be upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with psaltery and instrument of, a ten, of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He, ga he gathereth the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depth in the storehouses. In storehouses, let all the earth... Fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart, of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From, from the place of his habitation, he looketh upon the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their work. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host, a mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his, in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive from famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Uh, dear God, uh, we, we love you tonight, and uh, we're so grateful and so thankful that we can uh, come to church on a Wednesday and, and hear from you. Uh, so, Father, we do pray that we would hear from you this evening. I pray that uh, those downstairs in the discipleship program would hear from you. I pray, dear God, that their hearts would be just united together down there as our hearts are united, and, and we would just learn something from your word, because uh, that's why we're here is to uh, hear from you. Uh, Lord, they're not here to hear from me. So, Father, I pray that you'd help me to speak, help me to speak clearly, help me, Heavenly Father. Uh, to uh, say what needs to be said and keep me from saying what doesn't need to be said. And, and please be with my voice, Lord, uh, uh, help it to stay strong. Lord, we just thank you so much uh, for being a good God to us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, uh, for the King James Bible. And uh, we just pray, dear God, now that uh, you be with this message in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I wasn't here last week. But the week before, we started preaching, we started teaching out of Psalms 33. I don't know if you remember that. Do you remember that? A little bit, some, yeah, that's okay. I don't even remember, but I got my notes so I can go back over it. Uh, I said a couple weeks ago that uh, this, this psalm is one of the psalms, one of the 35 psalms that doesn't have a title. There's no title to this psalm. Is there a title in your Bible to this psalm? No, but uh, it, it, does that mean that this psalm is any less of importance to, to know? No, just because it doesn't have a title doesn't mean it's any less of important. But uh, I went through the first uh, few verses of this psalm. And uh, in verse number one, it says, Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in what? Rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Nathaniel picked on me a couple of, couple of weeks ago because I was saying something. I don't know if anybody else caught it that was here. I was switching one word with the other, and I just kept saying it back and forth, or kept saying it, and Nathaniel was over there chuckling, and he finally told me why he was, was laughing, and then I corrected myself. Thanks, bud. At least I got him to chuckle at me, but I'm going to be able to chuckle at you because you got a, you got a 
you got to snuggle with Papa this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the first few verses tells us to rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. And in verse 2, it tells us how to praise and how to rejoice. Rejoice or, or praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with psaltery, an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. I'm going to be careful, but our music does need to be right. Just because you can turn that volume up as loud as you can, it doesn't mean that you're praising God with it. We need to be very careful with what we're listening to. <clears throat> and I, we just went over uh, uh, the uh, other verses there, verses, um, where's my notes here? Verses 6, six through 9 uh, about the, uh, how we need to rejoice but that, that's, I guess that's the title of the message is rejoicing in the Lord and that, that we need to rejoice in his word. Uh, verses 3, uh, verse, verse 4, it says, For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are, are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of his goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth, he gathereth the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depth in the storehouses. And so we need to rejoice in his word. Amen? His word is very important. I don't know if you picked up on it, but pastor and anybody who really gets behind this pulpit talks about how important reading our Bible is. Amen? And I guess you can't hear it enough because it is very important that we get into the word of God. Amen. We need to rejoice in his word because his word is powerful. Amen? Amen? His word is personal and his word is precious. And I hope it is that to you. But rejoice in the Lord. Verse number one, I'm going to go back there just for a few minutes. Rejoice in the Lord. And, and, and nothing else. I have a quote here. To rejoice in the, tempt, in the temporal comforts is dangerous. To rejoice in self is foolish. To rejoice in sin is fatal. But to rejoice in God is heavenly. That quote was said by Spurgeon. Listen, the Bible tells us to rejoice in the Lord. And nothing else. We don't rejoice in ourselves. We don't rejoice in the things that we get. Listen, we, we get happy when we get new things, right? And can, we can be happy and compassionate about that stuff, but it only brings a temporary joy to your life. Why? Because sooner or later, that thing or whatever you get, kind of the, the newness wears off. Amen? Amen. Getting Liz's van was, was exciting. Now it's just a van. Now we got to put gas in it, we got to drive it, and we got to pay for it. Woo! There's no more rejoicing in that. It, wasn't, it was just temporal. But rejoicing in the Lord stands forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the Lord always. Amen? Go to 1 Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Verse 16, we all know this verse, right? Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. 
In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So is verse 16, rejoice evermore, the will of God? So rejoicing in the Lord is the will of God, which we're going to be talking about tonight. So go back over to Psalms 33. <clears throat> Not only do we rejoice in his word, and in Psalms 33, verses 10 through 12, we rejoice in his will. Rejoice in his will. Like, man, Brother Paul, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sure what the will of God is for my life, so how can I rejoice in it? I'm going to tell you. Rejoice in his will. Verse number 10. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. You know his will is the best will? Regardless what you and I think, his will, in verse number 10, is dominant. Like, Brother Paul, what, but I don't know the will of God for my life. Well, his will, you can know this, is dominant. Men, men can make plans and devise and in, 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 in scheme on many things, but God is going to be the one that has, he's going to he have the last say. Amen? I don't know if that makes sense. Listen, no matter what's going on in the world, right? We got Iran, North Korea, China, Russia, all these things in this big picture, right? You think any of that maybe God knows about? Do you think some of that might be according to his plan? According to his will? Psalms 33 and verse number 10, it says, The Lord bring the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people to none effect. Listen, nothing's going to surprise God. Why? Because it may be a part of his divine plan. It may be a part of his will. Don't be surprised, church, when God does something in your life. Why? Because it is his will. Not our will, but his will. We just have to learn to recognize that. Rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because he is moving his will in your life. But there's too many times to where we want to take the reins and say, you want to know what? Ugh, this is not really what I want to do. But God is so loving and compassionate, and he'll go, okay, go ahead. And then he'll try to bring you back, right, to get you in line with his will. Amen? Amen. It doesn't take him by surprise. It takes us by surprise. <clears throat> Listen, don't let our, our foolish decisions of our government, listen, uh, to discourage you. Right? It, it can't, don't let it get you down. What? Because God's got a plan. And we have to trust that plan. And that plan is being fulfilled through the Bible. If anything, that ought to excite us. Why? Because we can see the pages of this book just coming to life. And what's going on in the world, it's coming to life. It's, it's being real to us. Why? Because the next thing on the agenda, look at, we could go at any time. And is that his will? At some point, it will be his will. But it's our, it's our job in the meantime to rejoice in the will of God. Amen. Oh, Brother Jim, you, you may know, remember this. I sent Brother Jim a picture of uh, us being in uh, Puerto Rico back in 2017. And we had a fellow down there, a, a godly man. But we would be conversating and he'd walk by and be like, right, praise the Lord. That's how we would pray. Yeah. Hey, we'd be excited. Yeah, praise the Lord. You know, where's the excitement? Rejoicing in the Lord is being excited. Remember the apostles that were being beaten back in Acts chapter 5 for preaching the gospel, for teaching? They said, look, you don't go out there and teach Jesus, right? But they went away, what? The Bible says rejoicing. 
that they suffered the shame for Jesus Christ. Amen. Not for what they were doing, but for Jesus Christ. Why? Because the, the Bible tells them they, they knew what the scripture was saying, that, that, that all that live godly shall suffer what? So they were thinking about that verse, saying, man, whew, we were just getting beat up. Wasn't it awesome? Did you see how his fist came across and punched me in the face? That was great. We would want to retaliate as fast as we could. I don't think any of us have gotten any kind of persecution like that for preaching the gospel or for teaching the gospel or handing out a gospel tract, have we? I don't think so, but guess what? It may come to that. And if it does come to that, can we, in Psalms 33, in verse number 1, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Can we sing praise unto his name? Amen. You remember uh, Paul being thrown in jail? What was he doing? He was singing, amen? He was singing praises unto God, right? He was rejoicing in the Lord while he's in prison. But we have a hard time to even rejoice in the Lord, and, and we got it good. We have a hard time getting up and going, thank you, God, for the, the air that we can breathe. Thank you, God, that I can, that I can get out of my bed and put my, put my socks and shoes on and, and get out there and do something. We can rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in his will. Rejoice in his will is dominant. Listen, he's, he's got it all under control. Psalms 115. I ate a piece of pizza before uh, church, and normally I don't eat. Now I know why. I don't think this bottle of water is going to cut it. I may have to get another. Psalms 115. <clears throat> in verse number 3, But our God is in the heavens. Amen? Amen. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Period. So whatever he has done, he has pleased. Why argue about it? If it's his will, why argue about it? But God, it's not fair. Well, guess what? Life is not fair sometimes. Amen? Listen, I bet you Brother Rich, while he's watching, is it fair that he's laying up in a hospital bed right now? But guess what, Brother Rich? You sure can rejoice in there. Why? Because somebody in that hospital needs to see the joy of the Lord through him. Yes, sir. Right? And guess what? That just made us all more pray for Brother Rich. Maybe he needed a little bit more prayers, Brother Rich. And guess what? We were all praying for you. Guess what? Knowing that somebody's praying for you, I don't know about you, but I get excited. Yeah. Especially when I get a text from one of the brothers in the church saying, Hey, just want you to know I'm praying for you today. For no reason, but that gets me excited. I rejoice. I get, I get excited and then go, okay, God, what's coming my way? Right? But that's no reason to fret and get all worried and nilly-willy and be like, oh, oh I'm not going to do this. Oh. Why? Because it may be the Lord's will. Yeah. may be the Lord's will. The kids, kids, do you know what the Lord wants for your life? I know what he wants. He wants you to honor thy mother and father for in the Lord, for this is right. Obey your parents. Oh, but I didn't pass my grades. Well, was that the Lord's will? Probably not. You probably didn't study or study hard enough. Amen? Listen, the, the Lord's will is dominant. Psalms, go back to Psalms 33. I'm just going to hang on to this bottle. Not only is his will dominant, let's take a look at verse number 11. The counsel of the Lord, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. 
Listen, verse number 11, his will is determined. It's already determined. You cannot change the mind of God. Amen? Why? Because look at verse number 11. The counsel of the Lord, what? Standeth what? Forever. It's settled. It's already determined. We can't change it. We can't call him up on the phone and say, Lord, I really think that uh, you ought to change our church schedule. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's determined. Lord, um, I don't think that uh, the rapture should happen at this time. Well, guess what? It's going to happen. Whether you think it or not, or whether you want it to happen or not, it's going to happen. You can't change the mind of God. Things that happen in this world, in this wor world, are a part of his plan. That may be hard to fathom at some points. Like, why do things happen in this world? Why? Because it's a part of God's plan. Listen, your thoughts and my thoughts, the Bible says, are not God's, right? So you and I only see what we see. Does that make sense? We can only see as far as that wall over there. God sees beyond that. Right? God sees the person that needs to be saved beyond that wall. You and I, we stop and we say, okay, we're not going any farther. Why? Because that's all we can see. That's all we're going to do. God, in his infinite mercy and his plan, and he, he goes, look, if there's something beyond that wall, I need you to go through that door beyond the wall, and you'll find out. I'm not doing that. But it's already determined. So why can't we do that? Why can't we just have faith and be like, okay, God, you want me to go through that door, not knowing what's on the other side? Well, yeah, that's a part of faith. Amen? Amen. It's about trusting God in his will for your life and for my life. It's to open up that door and maybe see that person that is weeping, crying, getting ready to do something ridiculous. Who knows? But you're able to reach that person. But that's not part of my will. Oh, right. Because it's not about your will. It's about God's will. Amen? Amen? Rejoice. It's, it's determined. You know, his life is determined for us. We can either follow it or not. God gives us the free will to do what we want. We don't have to get up and read, and read our Bibles in the morning. We don't have to get up and, and to pray. Right? We don't have to, to go, if we get to do those things right, that's a part of God's will. And then when God is trying to direct us and to move us into his will, and we just keep kicking it off, he'll, he'll, let, he'll let you go. He'll let you fall and falter. For a just man falleth what? And then riseth up again. But that's how loving and compassionate our God is, the, to pick us up, to brush us off and say, okay, are you ready to do my will? Are you ready to trust me? It may take a little while, but guess what? It's better to just do it the first time Amen. and not second guess it. But sometimes that's how we learn, right? Just like a kid, don't touch that, it's hot. Don't touch that, it's hot. Don't touch, all right, touch it. You're going to have to find out for yourself. It's hot. Amen? Amen? God has determined what will take place. Go to Isaiah uh, 46. Isaiah 46, starting in verse number 9. Remember the, former, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. 
I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the ends, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. Doesn't that sound a little familiar in Psalms 33? And I will do, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling the ravenous bird from the east, the man that excuseth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and also will do it. Listen, God's plan, his will is determined, folks. Psalms 135. <clears throat> Psalms 135 and verse number 6. Whatsoever the Lord pleased that, that he did in heaven and in earth, in the seas, and all deep places. For those verses, can we determine that God's will is determined? It's planned out. It's set. Listen, we, you and I can't get all irky and jerky. Oh, what's... Listen, but we don't have to. We don't have to. Why? Because go to Romans chapter 8. We know this verse. I was able to share this verse to a friend at work. <clears throat> Romans 8, verse 28 So we can have comfort knowing that God's in control, right? Absolutely. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are, who are the called according to his purpose. And we know all things work together for good. Is that, does that even mean some tough and trying times? It sure does. But listen, you and I can have comfort in knowing those, those tough and trying, and trying times are going to work out for good. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. There's the, there's the key, to them that love God. Do you love God? Do you love God? I hope you do love God. Listen, God's will is determined. There's no way around it. Go back over to Psalms 33. Psalms 33. Let's look at verse number 12. His will is desirable. In verse number 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Listen, the will of God is desirable. The nations, the Bible talks about the nation whose God is the Lord. I believe we have a nation that is, that God is no longer Lord. So because of that, is God's will already determined upon the nation? Amen, it is. It's dominant. But you know his will can be desirable for your life. Why? Because the nation will be blessed. You individually will be blessed if you will desire God's will for your life. Go with me to Luke chapter 11.
Luke 11, very familiar verse. Luke 11 and starting in verse number 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Read it out loud. Whose will? God's will. Jesus is teaching his disciples, look it. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so on earth. Give us, give us day by day our daily bread and forgive, us, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not to temptation, but to deliver us from evil. But I want you to look at, at, at verse number 2 where it says, Hallowed be thy name, and thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That is desiring God's will when you can pray, God, let your will be done in my life. Thy will, as in heaven, as in earth. I began to think about that, as in heaven. Is there a will in heaven? There's people who carry out God's will in heaven, the angels, right? Not the fallen angels, obviously, but God's angels. They carry out God's will. You ever think about this? They carry out God's will with no problem at all, with no refuting and no questioning. They just say, okay, we're going to do it. And then I got thinking about this. How much more precious are we because we were made in the image of God, right? We, and we trusted him into saving our soul and taking us to heaven, right? But we have a hard time trusting in him with our lives and directing us where we need to go. Listen, if God is calling you somewhere to do something or do something, listen, trust in his will and just follow it. Amen. I can't tell you what that is. Only you can. But you got to be praying. You got to be reading. You got to be coming to church, getting good counsel. Amen? Amen. Thy will be done. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, 6, it says, <clears throat> let's start in verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and signalness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as man pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from where? From the heart. Do you desire God's will for your life? I hope and pray you do. I know Jesus did in Matthew chapter 26. Zoom over there real quick. This is Jesus at the, before his crucifixion with his disciples in the garden. And in verse 41, it says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Look at verse 42. And he went, a, and, or, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Jesus desired the will of his Father. It wasn't about him. Why? Because he was there here on earth to point to who? 
to the Father. The Bible also talks about if, 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 you, if, if you do his will, I can't, what, what is that Bible verse? That's going to, man, I can't think of it right now. But anyways, but he desired the will of God, his father. He knew what he was going to go through, amen? He knew what was coming to him, but he still desired the will of God. If you knew of something tragic was going to come to you, Listen, and it may, can you stand back? Can you sit and pray, kneel and pray as Jesus, Jesus did and said, look it, I mean, if this cup passed me not, guess what? Father, thy will be done. Amen. We'd be saying, oh no, please get me out of this. I do not want to go through whatever I'm going to go through. I don't want to deal with it. Jesus says, look, it's just your will be done. You'll see me through it. Amen. God will always see us through it. Amen. His will is desirable. Hebrews 13, I got to hurry up right here. Just a few more minutes, okay? We all right? We okay with that? <clears throat> Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 and verse 21, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. How do we do the will of God? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, it's only through Jesus Christ that you can do the will of God. Brother Paul, but how can I do the will of God? I'm going to give you four things real quick. How you can do the will of God. First, you need to walk with the Lord. Amen? You need to walk with Him. You need to determine in your heart. You need to just set it, plant your feet and say, I'm going to walk with God no matter where He goes. Amen? Enoch in, in, in Genesis walked with God, didn't he? Can't you and I walk with God each and every day? Sure we can. Sure we can. We need to just take a hold. But the thing is, listen, we, we want to have a hold on here, hold on to the world, and hold on to Jesus Christ at the same time. It doesn't work like that. You need to either walk with Christ or walk with the world. I'd much rather walk with Christ. Why? Because I walked with the world, and I know where that got me. You must surrender to him. Withholding nothing, God wants everything. Walk with Jesus, walk with the Lord. Number two, you need to invest in the Lord. Well, what do you mean invest? Go to Matthew chapter 6. Invest. Invest in the Lord. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 20, it says, verse 19, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20, but lay, up, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. Listen, invest into heavenly things. Invest in the Lord. Listen, I know the temporal things are nice, right? Millions of people work to have those temporal things that mean absolutely nothing. The Bible says not, don't lay up treasures here on earth. Lay them up in heaven. Amen. Listen, what, I have to look at myself. What am I doing in the will of God that I'm laying up a treasure in heaven? Listen, I have six kids that I would all, that I would love to see in heaven with me. 
And whatever I do here for them is to show them, I hope I'm laying up a treasure in heaven. Amen? Does that make sense? We need to invest in the Lord. We need to make the Lord our first place in Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Number three, look to the Lord in, Ro in Hebrews chapter 12. Look to the Lord. In verse number two, it says in Romans 12, two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible tells us that looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, not to What's out here? So how can we do the will of God, walk with the Lord, invest with the Lord, look to the Lord, and finally is to love. To lo we know to love the Lord, but love as the Lord. Love as the Lord. How did Jesus love? unconditionally our love sometimes is selfish and fleshly motivated and when we have that kind of love listen that's not the will of God we must love as Jesus loved so walk invest look and love you know what that spells will will so what's the will of God for your life? You have to find that out. You need to read. You need to pray. You need to seek counsel, godly counsel. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Lord, I love you. Um, thank you so much for your word. Lord, I pray that you are happy. I pray that you are honored and glorified. Lord, it's, it's not us. This is all about you. And Father, I just pray that you be with this invitation now and uh, just use it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We'll have an invitation. If you need to come forward for anything, the altar is open. If you don't know the will of God for your life, listen, coming up and asking him, it would be a good place to start. <laughs>